Okay, welcome back to From the Other Side. Uh, this is a podcast run by me, Ricardo Desma, and my co-host, Akari Cardona. And today's episode, which is called A Closer Look Inside, <laughs> which um, <laughs> it's in this episode, we'll be talking about the Mission Inn, Mount Ribido, Evergreen Cemetery. Um, what else? What? That's like Riverside, so I think that's it for Riverside. We'll be talking about a uh, big attraction of Riverside, like many, like many of the historical, like landmarks of Riverside, and really where Riverside, like the origins of Riverside, started at. If you haven't watched the first episode, I highly recommend that you do. It's amazing. The first episode is called uh, "A Look Inside." It's a great, great episode. Um, I think uh, Kari wanted to say something. I'm not sure. Oh, so like if you're if you, if you're just tuning into this one and haven't watched the other one, uh, what are you doing with your life? You have oh, no purpose you. if you don't watch the first episode. Come on. Yeah, you gotta go watch it. If you like, I like if you're if you don't watch the first one, you should stop watching right now. I'm talking <laughs> to you, Miss Perez. <laughs> skip I mean, it through the episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, skip it through all the episodes. <laughs> no, we're just kidding, Miss Perez. But um, going going back to the podcast, we're talking about the. The origins of Riverside and really where Riverside first started to become the city and popular place it is now. So the first place we'll start with is the Mission Inn. And the Mission Inn was first uh it was first a Mission Inn hotel and spa began as a quay adobe boarding house in eighteen seventy six, becoming a full service hotel in the early nineteen hundreds. Opened by Frank Miller, which was actually one of the first founders of Riverside. It expanded in 1903 with over 200 guest rooms in addition of the Mission Wing, built in Mission Revival style, while incorporating architectural features from more than 20 different California missions. Three more wings materialized as demand grew, and eventually pretty much they just kept growing as the Spanish Wing and the Rotunda, Rotunda Wing um, were completed in 1931. Miller filled the hotel with valuable items from across the globe, Including artwork, furniture, and religious relics. Um, and if you actually been to the Mission Hotel, the like the main hallway, like the, I guess the service area, where you like book rooms and all that. There's you can see some of these items. Like you can see like the original Riverside Bell, or like two Riverside Bells that were, um, first made for. I think one of them was for an athlete who won an award. And then the second one, it was just like the first Riverside Bell ever, I think. But those are the first two you can see. Um, what are you saying, Nicole? Oh, I said, uh, wasn't there a chair in between the bells? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think there was. There was a chair, but I don't know what I don't know what kind of. I forgot what. Yeah. Occurred. But pretty much, um, Frank Miller, he was one of the original founders of Riverside, and or one of the original leaders of Riverside. And because he was such a prominent figure and Riverside was becoming so popular, many U.S. presidents and celebrities had come and visit the Mission Inn. And some of the U.S. presidents were Theodore Roosevelt, Nixon, and Reagan. And those are presidents are, I mean, well known as, I mean, it's kind of like obvious, but the U.S. presidents, like I think everyone should know them from a push, Carter, but... <laughs> but they're sorry they're also visited by many social leaders such as Booker T. Washington Amelia Earhart and even Albert Einstein which I'm kind of finding hard to believe because I didn't know Albert Einstein was like 1900s 1900s pretty much but I don't know I that, that, that was a fact that surprised me I didn't know that Albert Einstein visited this place and even my favorite YouTubers went and stayed there for the night. Yeah, actually, many YouTubers um come uh when they come visit Riverside because it's right next to LA. They usually stay at the Mission and Hotel. It's a very very popular spot, yep. and a very nice area too. Yeah, like the Mission Inn, like it was built like really beautifully, like the towers and like the architecture and all that. It was really beautiful. Yeah, when we walked in, there's like a lot of old um relics. Like I said, I think. The main entrance has two cannons. I don't know the history behind the cannons, but it's just cannons and that's sick. Imagine seeing a cannon when you walk in. Dude, who wouldn't want to see a cannon when you walk in? <laughs> Sorry. And 
Actually, there used to be a bird cage. Like, apparently, Frank Miller used to have two birds. Or was it a fan of, like, the giant parrots? What are they called? Parakeets? The parakeets, I think. No, aren't they the small ones? The yeah. big, the big colorful parents, like the the Rio parrots. But um, uh, he there used there's a cage like right at the entrance where they used to hold one of them, but it's gone now because of COVID, I guess. Maybe he sadly passed away, but I don't know. It was a cool fact that I remember as a kid. But um, sadly, we did not get to. I guess really explore, them like the whole hotel because it did cost money to enter the rooms and hallways and. We are only teenage students who are doing this for a project, and we're not going to pay two hundred dollars to book a room. But, but um, I mean, again, with history comes many stories, and with many stories usually comes hauntings. And one of the big hauntings with the Mission Inn Hotel is one of the main spiral staircases that they have. Many people do commit suicide on those staircases; they just jump to their death. And yeah, I think, a, yeah, yeah, it's a spiral staircase and usually when it's like staircases like those it becomes like portals for um yeah. like ghosts and stuff to be there yeah yeah um <clears throat> there has been sightings and hearings of people in the hallways or just like shadows in the hallways when like when you think you're seemingly alone and suddenly someone's behind you something and then you turn around and no one's there like there have been many reporting it's actually kind of scary how many reporting is because like, I understand that it's a big, like, it's a popular area, but I feel like many people wouldn't, like, really follow that, kind of, <laughs> wouldn't follow that, that, uh, what's the word? Oh, I can't remember the word. But they would, they just wouldn't follow that social expectation. And, what was I going to say? Oh, the tunnels. Apparently, there's a, a one large tunnel from the mission into Mount Rubido, which yeah. will be our next topic on this in this episode, Mount Rubido, which connects from the mission in. Um, also, to add to the hauntings part, um, apparently, when they were first building the mission in hotel, um, the Frank Miller's daughter, or yeah, her daughter, well, the daughter's name was Alice Hutchings. And she ended up dying. Like, she was, like, a very, like, little girl. And from what I remember from a video, I think she got, like, uh, I think she went in a tunnel or in a well or something. She, like, uh, for sure. Oh, it's construction. And she died, I think, from, uh, yeah, I think getting stuck there. Yeah, that actually sucks. Yeah. I'm trying to see a repeating pattern of little girls like dying. Little, and yeah, little girls in like, <laughs> like old looking houses and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. When we did visit the mission in, it was kind of, it was like really bust. Like it was alive. There's a lot of people there. So we didn't experience any hauntings. But you could definitely feel like the energy of like the mission in being hold. There's a lot of like service areas where there's like stairs that you can go up to. But like you can tell that it was old and creepy because like. Even though right next to it, there's, like, areas of people eating and talking and, like, it alive. The moment you look to those stairs, immediately that entire feeling goes away. And, like, it's, like, oh, like, that's that leads to somewhere a little more quieter and empty. Yeah. And there's this one room. It was the Spanish, traditional Spanish art or hall. Like, I forgot what it was called. Do you remember, do you remember that, Corey? Yeah. It, it, we went, it was with Matthew. Oh yeah, yeah, also Matthew was there too with us, but we dragged um, him as always. <laughs> it's, we we went to that hall and we opened the door and nobody was in there, so autom- we automatically assumed that we weren't allowed in there. But, <laughs> like opening that door, like I remember getting hit by like a burst of cold air and it was just seats and like it looked like there was like a, a like one main like sermon where like so like looked, a yeah, it looked talk. like a more like you know how like this like ballrooms like a big space. Yeah, it was just that, but with um, with like fancy tables and chairs. Yeah, it was pretty big, and we didn't want to get in trouble and find out how yeah. big it was or how scary it was. Yeah. But I mean, overall, the area was nice. People were taking wedding photos right outside, and some of the they oh, there's gift shops around it too, and a lot of the gift shops like you can like 
the gift shots told the story of the mission in as well. Just with like a bunch of old items there, like dolls, like ceramics, like um, or in the pots and teacups. There's yeah, there's a lot of those. We actually found a, a little section full of knives, but I don't know how how related that is to the whole thing. Weapons, crazy. <laughs> Weapons <laughs> cause violence. That's that's it. That's it, guys. That's our podcast right there. <laughs> um, we'll, see, we'll see you on the next episode and uh, goodbye <laughs> <laughs> no. but so when you're in the in the courtyard which is like the dining area outside well like in the hotel but like there's like a outside area um there's a certain spot where so from the courtyard there's an area where you stand and there's a spot like a corner where there's like not like a tower but um, also from a YouTube video that I saw, there was, like, someone standing there, but it was most likely a mannequin of the owner, and um, across from that is a haunted room, and from that room, um, that's where you most likely see the daughter, like, hanging around. Yeah, she apparently haunts that little area, and sometimes you can hear her walking around. There have been sightings of people like seeing her and like talking to her, asking her like, "Oh, where are your parents?" Or like, "Like, like, where? Like, are you supposed to be here?" And she usually doesn't say anything, but then like moments later, like any ghost, like they turn around for a second, they come back and she's gone, like not a trace left gone at all. Gone with the wind. Gone with the wind, literally. Yep. And speaking of the wind. To Mount Rubido. I don't know how it connects to Mount Rubido, but um, it was pretty windy when we went up there. That's true, actually. Um, worst adventure of my life. I was dying heading up there. Okay, wait, I was already wait, wait, haunted. Wait. <laughs> I almost became one of the ghosts up there. Yes, <laughs> yes. <It's, it's>, uh, <laughs> Kari almost became one of the lost spirits that supposedly rumor like. No, the one that gets the one that goes missing on the mountain. I <laughs> Yeah, like, she almost became born at the mountain, but um, yeah, yeah. So, the history of Mount Rubido. Okay, sorry for that, but um, back to Mount Rubido. First, we're gonna start talking about Frank A. Miller, who's actually mentioned a lot because he was again a leader of Mount one of the Mount. I mean, not Mount Rubido, one of Riverside's first leaders, and was very prominent in the beginnings of Riverside and everything surrounding it. So, Frank A. Miller. Born 1858, died 1935. Frank Augustus Miller's family moved from Riverside in 1874, where his father worked as a surveyor and engineer. The family built and ran a boarding house in downtown Riverside, which Miller later purchased from his father. Inspired by the mission revival, Miller added wings and features that ultimately transformed into the Mission Inn Hotel. He also managed the Loring Opera House. Miller is one of Riverside's strongest promoters and steadfast civic leader. So, Miller plays a very large role in the history of everything we're talking about. He, we have him to thank for pretty much Riverside. And so, just take a moment to say thank you, Miller, for giving us a good podcast. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. We should have contacted him. <laughs> Dude, we should have. Okay, so this is going to be talked about later, but he was buried at the Evergreen Cemetery. But yes, that's him for, and his oh, like, daughter. Oh. Yeah. So going back to Mount Rubido, uh, Mount Rubido's beginning started in 1906. The Huntington Park Association was incorporated by Frank Miller, a uh, recurring name, and Henry E. Huntington, with the intention of building a park at the peak of Mount Rubido that would draw people to purchase the lots in the planned subdivision below. And it's a, pretty much a list of monuments. And that's where they got the idea for the cross that they put at the very um peak of the tower. Or the not tower, the mountain. Um, Miller had recently purchased ten Stearns motor cars for local motor touring, and the peak offered an impressive view. Begging for a road to reach it, in February nineteen oh seven, the road was dedicated on Washington Washington's birthday, and the U.S. flag raised at its peak. With Miller as a guide, um, Rito became a destination for some of the most celebrated people of the time. And because of all this, Mount Rito became very popular as um I guess just as a tourist attraction. Like people just enjoyed going to Mount Rubido. And you guys can't see it, but there's a picture 
that was like in the time when it was first building and there's a bunch of cars and people just going up the mountain, going back down, back and forth. And it looks pretty <laughs> bustling. Like there's like at least eighty cars on this and remember, you know, even though Mamre does a, a mountain, it's not that big. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's like like yes, it's impressive, like if you don't know what you're doing, then yeah, it's gonna kick your ass. Like it did a car ease. But Okay, buddy. Like, that was only the first time. After the second time, like a car was perfectly fine. Like Mount Rubido is like not a difficult like place to hike. So the fact that they got all these people people to go up there and actually fit up there was impressive. But um going back to the history of Mount Rubido, we're gonna start talking about more about the paranormal. And again, there have been people that lost their lives in Mount Rubido, many suicides that committed. And just recently, a couple of years ago, I think 2020, um, a woman was found dead at that park, or on, or she was found dead uh, south of a construction site of uh, Mount Rubido, and she was marked as missing. She was marked as missing after not coming back from her hike at Mount Rubido, and they couldn't find her for a couple of days until someone reported a dead body at a construction site. The police officers say there's no foul play, but. They also haven't released any further details, so I mean, I can only assume the worst at this point. Yeah. So, well, I would think like at the top, like you get the not well, I mean impulses, but like the tendencies to be like, oh yeah, like it's beautiful up there, like the wind, and like yeah, like it would be a like a peaceful way to go, but then again, it's up on the mountain, and like with all that energy, like it's a collective like ball of just negative energy up there so of course it would be an attractive little like light post for, for spirits yeah and i do believe that because like this like the peak of the mountain was such a like popular idea or such a popular area with like frank a. miller and henry huntington like putting so much like hard work into mount rubido i believe that that peak where the cross is that that's where the most energy is at and like at nighttime, when no one's around, you will feel like you can feel the mountain being alive. Like I, I don't know if like about you and you guys when we went um on the hike on Saturday. Um, we are okay. Well, set context. We want to hike me, Kari, Dago, and Matthew to our oh, friends. Oh, that was Monday. Monday. That's right. We went on a night hike, and um, there were still people around, but like being up there at night was different because like. All of those people around, like, you could feel the mountain was, like, alive with you. Yeah. And, oh, and other than the tower, there's actually another tower. There's a tower. Other, sorry, other than the cross up there, there's an, a tower that was in um dedication to Frank A. Miller for everything he had done for that mountain. And there's, like, a plaque on the tower, like, pretty much explaining who he is and all that. And that's the Riverside Bridge. Yeah. Which I had confused with another. Yeah, Riverside the tower bridge. was right with the yeah with the Riverside Bridge. Yeah, there's another bridge around it that's apparently just as haunted, but that was on the other side of the mountain. I wasn't trying to drive on that side. That's kind of good. What man? Save gas, man. To point to save gas. Hey, it's, very crazy. it's a it's a different society now. Like I don't know. Like looking at this picture, I don't know how they got all those cars up there. Like my car would die halfway through the mountain. I could, it would not survive going up there. I mean, looking at the trail, like it's kind of skinny for cars. Exactly. Well, I mean, the cars were small at the time too. Oh well, yeah. Again, but then back then, times. it'd be like little, like those, like carts now. What do you mean? Like they'll be like carts, you not know, like in mining. With like the railroads with like the carts with like coal and stuff. Yeah. I would think that's how they would build that stuff up there. Well, no. Well, I mean, at this time they had like. They had, they had cars and motors to like be able to like bring it up because this was like early two hundreds. Mm -hmm. Wait, never mind. I take that back. This was early nineteen hundreds. So no, you're correct. Sorry. <laughs> But, but they did have the I do theme. Well, yeah. While it's a good, like, beautiful place to hike, 
I would recommend to not do it during the night because there's snakes. Yes, there's snakes, and again, you can feel the energy. So, so back to the haunting part. Going up there, it, the first time we went up there, um, I just to disclose it, like if you're if you're not comfortable with like spirits or anything, I advise you step back or stop listening. But because we will start talking about the Ouija board and how we start using it. Yes. So this is your last warning, but um, pretty much when going up there with um the Ouija board, it was a little scary, but it wasn't like I didn't I didn't really believe it. I mean, honest. Yeah, like, going up, like, I felt like a skeptic of the Ouija board, especially because yeah. uh, when we bought it from the Barnes and Nobles guy, he was like, "Oh yeah, it didn't work." And this and that. Yeah, and like oh, the Barnes and Noble guy didn't help. And I was like, oh, "Okay." Well, <laughs> he lied to like, us. Like, yeah, pretty much. And <laughs> so, I mean, going up there, you can you definitely feel like you're not alone. Like you constantly feel like there's someone there. And um, so pretty much we we climbed to the top of the mountain, and the climb up sucks. Bad. Uh, Akari knows that. Do you, do you want to explain a little bit of that, Akari? I know, and the thing was, <laughs> and that's where we did the session. Yeah, so once you go up, like, you make it to the cross. Like, there's, like, steps going up. And, like, just, it's just behind the cross right there. And that's where you'll get to that area. It is pretty dangerous to go in that area, though. There's a smooth rock. You have to climb up. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um... Just in case that last part did cut out, <laughs> um, <laughs> the context of what a car is talking about is there's like a little secret area up top, and it's a little difficult to get there. But um, pretty much we decided that that was like there wasn't too much people there. It was closed off, and it was just rocks behind you, and then it was the rest of the mountain, like the rest of the mountain view, and it was actually very beautiful. But we decided that right there would be the best spot for our little a little uh it's called a little calling awakening all oh, our little uh, insurgent uh, crap a um a little insurgent or a little a little sermon no sermon ritual. i used the word sermon term. A little... ritual it's not a ritual so <laughs> little... we decided to bring out the the board and see if it's true for what it is but this and, time for because we went the first time and we were not uh protected we did not have holy water we didn't have salt we didn't have crosses or anything like that besides like bracelets or necklaces but um we kind of just like winged it and we were asking the name and it was spelling out a latin name i don't know how to pronounce it but it spelled out a latin name and the thing was when we asked the question to spell it out we weren't paying attention until I saw that it was moving and like I kind of drew their attention and then we started kind of like freaking out and not gonna lie Loki I thought that was a joke I was like oh like someone's moving it like as everybody would think and I think you asked if it committed suicide there and I said yes and I asked that I think so yeah Dang, really oh, you said that you die here, and I said yes. Oh, I I do remember asking if it was like a, a resent resentful spirit. Yeah. Oh, you said that for the second one. Oh, did I? The second session, yeah. And uh, later on, I think we asked what it was or something, but then I caught that it was trying to spell out demon. It went to the D, the E, and then was going to the M. And that's why I was like, okay, yeah, like, if it ends up spelling out demon, like, we we have to stop. Like, we're going to be unsafe, and we're high up on a mountain, so anything could happen. Um, Later on, Ricardo, you asked if we were able to say goodbye, and I said no. So that part was really scary, and I really wanted you guys to be safe. So I was like, yeah, we should, like, hurry and, like, cut it off, cut the connection between us and them. And... Yeah, later on, we ended up saying, well, it was going to goodbye already, and I said goodbye, and the feeling of uneasiness was so bad that going down the mountain, I felt like someone was following us. I felt like I was starting to see stuff, um, and it left me pretty paranoid after. 
Yeah, and so we actually went with our friend Matthew again. We took him for like a majority of all the trips, except for um the last one. But um, he went with us, and he did for a little bit. We, me and Akari, both thought that he was messing with us. And that, like, it was like, oh, like, he's moving in it. But um, I think there's a point. We were playing on the uneven surface, and there's a point of a time where, like, it, like, moved over. And the three of us, because it was, it was like, an uneven surface, the three of us, like, all our fingers let go for, like, a, like a split second. And, like, it kept moving. And I, I'm, I don't know what I want to, like, believe of it. Like, I, I still want to think that someone was moving it, but at the same time, like, like I, I didn't really, like I didn't really feel the uneven, like un, uneasiness of someone watching us going back down the mountain. Going back down the mountain, I, I felt fine, I guess, but Matthew and Akari did feel really like, like freaked out and like worried. And it wasn't until, after, we dropped off Akari at her house, heading back home, um, dropping Matthew off at his house. It wasn't until I told Matthew, like, I still feel like a car is in the back seat because it felt like someone was in the back seat. Like, I don't, it was, it's so hard to explain, like, because, like, a car wasn't talking, but it still felt like, like someone was in a car's spot in the back seat. Like, I, like, there were times where, like, I wanted to turn around because I, like, I, like, I felt someone's gaze on me. And, like, I don't know, like, I just, I felt that because, like, I just, I thought it was my own fault because, like, or, like, my own, like, head playing tricks on me. Because the car had just gone out of the car, but it wasn't until like halfway through the ride when I said that Matthew was like, "So you've been feeling that too?" And I was like, "What? Did I tell you that? I didn't tell you that, huh?" No, you guys didn't tell me that. That's why, like, right now, like, my heart like sank. No, yeah, it was it was crazy because like I remember saying that, and then Matthew was like, "So you feel that too?" And I was like, "Yeah, like it feels like a car is still like sitting in the back seat, but." It's like, it's not a car. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But when it comes to things like that, like, they get attracted to a lot of en negative energy. So when it came to me and Matthew, like, for us, we have a lot of negative energy with us um, because of, the, you know, the stuff we go through. And that's why, like, we felt it a lot more than what you, than you did. Yeah, I was, I was because yeah, I, I do feel like because I was skeptical. Skept skept skeptic. Skeptical. Skeptic about the whole thing. Skeptical. How do you skeptical. say it? Skeptical. Skeptical. Skeptic. Skept. That word. Because I was so <laughs> un, like unsure about like the whole thing. I do think that like, I guess the experience wasn't really full there for me. But um, I don't know. I you went back down the mountain. Like I did feel like I didn't feel the energy of Kari and Matthew were feeling, but I did feel like they're using this and like. Like, how worried, like, I did see how worried they were, like, going back down the mountain. So, yeah. No, because then Matthew ended up grabbing me, like, to the side, and he was like, oh, yeah, like, don't worry, like, it's gone. And I was like, oh, God. Like, going down, I kept turning around because I did feel like someone was following us. Yeah. And we, we actually, we actually did ask a couple people around, um, like, if they've ever felt something like that. But like, and some of them have said that like they've like they've gone on night hikes and they felt like someone was there with them, or like like someone was watching them, or like like this one like this one girl she um she explained how um one time she was going with the dog because she usually goes with the dog and for some reason she could not shake off the feeling that like no matter how fast she was running or how long how long she kept jogging up the mountain that somebody was like right behind her and. It wasn't until later down the mountain that I think um security or cops. Did she say cops? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know, but it, it was I think like it was most likely cops because I don't think the Mount River has security. Yeah, because it was like they like apparently like someone was up there and like you're just being a creeper and and stuff. But um, but that's not really paranormal. But I mean, they're having like we did ask around again, and people have been saying like they like they've seen and heard stuff. Oh, and that actually leads us back to the um the Riverside Bridge, the Riverside Bridge um when because because of the tribute to Frank Miller. Um, on that bridge, walking around like it was a long walk, and we did enjoy 
we like we stopped to enjoy like the scenery and like the fresh air. And as we were talking, like I'm not gonna lie, we we're talking about like weird stuff. Like halfway, I don't even know what we we're talking about, but I started barking halfway through, and we heard footsteps. <laughs> we heard we heard footsteps underneath us, and and um, That's and we all yeah we it was dark and we heard footsteps underneath us. And we all stopped because, like, it was like, oh, someone's like right next to us, like, like we like we can't be talking about this weird stuff. But we, I mean, we turned around and no one was there. And heading back down, the, oh, actually, before going up the mountain, we stopped by Evergreen Cemetery, which we also used this the Ouija board there for there yes. too. And this time we dragged another friend, Diego. Shout out to both Diego and Matthew for helping us and yes, you know, shout out to Diego being Matthew. dragged with us. Um, this time it was actually like we actually, we were blessed. Diego blessed us, thankfully, and he was the cameraman, so we didn't um make him you know be a part of anything with us. Um, we did get into contact with someone, Ivan. His name was Ivan. He was a war veteran, and he even went to like high, like he put the like the where it shows like the glass of the planchet, the planchet, sixty nine, and then went to high. And I was like, oh, like, this dude's pretty chill. And, yeah, we were having conversations. Um, What, what else did we ask? Yeah, I ended up saying, it went to 56. I think the year he died or born or his age. So it's one of those three. Uh, and then later on, Matthew asked if he wanted to for us to come and find him. His question freaked me out. But it ended up saying no. And... Uh, I was like, oh, like, okay, he's pretty chill. And then we asked him, he said, oh, like, do you want us to pay our respects from out here? And I said, yes. And then that's when I started to die. And then we're like, okay, thank you for joining us. Thank you for serving us in the war. We appreciate you. And then I went to goodbye. And yeah, he was pretty, he was a, he was a good person. Yes, Ivan was a very friendly spirit. Again, um, I felt very like just... I wasn't too sure about the whole sermon, and I like I I still want to think one of you two was moving it, but um, other than the actual Ouija board and like talking to a spirit, just being next to the cemetery, you could feel energy of like people. Like I kept there was times I kept looking around because I like I felt like someone was walking by, but like no one was walking by, and our cameraman Diego, same thing. He like he would turn around a couple of times and be like, "Oh, this person," but nobody was walking by. And yeah, he said he felt something. He said he felt like a poke on his lip. And I thought, and I, yes. I joked and I said Ivan was kissing him. Oh, the yeah. picture we took. We Oh, yeah, we, um, we took a picture. We took a funny photo. As a joke. It was a <laughs> joke, yes. Yeah. And at the bottom left of the picture, like, it looks corrupted. It looks like there's, like, a bubble of, like, red around it. It was, so that it was, picture was pretty yeah, questionable. It was very, like, it looked corrupted almost. Like, it was, like, a very disoriented video, like. Like it was, it was a picture of me and Diego, and you could barely make out my face, and I think Diego's face as well. Like you could, like it was, it was just our faces, like yeah, because we took was three fine. pictures. Yeah, it was three pictures, and that picture was the only picture that turned out like that. And it, and it's yeah. scary because it was only our faces, and everything else in the background was completely fine. It was unharmed, and it was left untouched. Yeah. And at that cemetery, Frank A. Miller and his daughter were actually buried there. So we wanted, we were going to go inside the cemetery, but we all decided that it'd be pretty rude if we went in there with an Ouija board or after using an Ouija board and, just and unannounced and, and just kind of walked around. Yeah. yeah. We didn't want to attract yeah. any bad or negative energy. I kind of did wish that I would have brought flowers to pay respects and to thank them, you know, because Riverside wouldn't be Riverside if it wasn't for them. Yeah, no, definitely. We should go back next time and then ask them. But um, and actually, I'll uh, bring flowers. Yeah, that closes up the last episode. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, we have one more episode going on. The, the this episode details is the inside. details inside. <laughs> yes, of course. Go check that episode <laughs> out. And that one would be covering the Queen Mary, which is a very popular ghost yes. ship in L.A. And so, with less than a minute left, and I believe, you like, should, 20 you seconds. Know, tune in. 
yes, tune in and watch it. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Guess. <laughs>